because she, Sunni put their hand in chest and she had put it down. Mm -hmm. What is the difference about how the Prophet Sallallahu prayed? Please confuse me, I want to know that. Okay, thank you very much. Um, not completely related to the topic of women in Islam, um, but uh, yes, how, how, why is it we have these differences? In the um, way very briefly again, because it's not connected mm. to the topic. Uh, but there are uh, differences in the Shia and Sunni methods, and one must understand, everyone must pay attention to this point, that after the sad demise of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the, the Khulafa had stopped the narration of traditions. So you could not mention the traditions of the Holy Prophet. They had banned it. Mm. So, you know, the, the Naql riwayat or, you know, the traditions of the Holy Prophet were not mentioned. They were banned. And Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the last uh, Banu Umayyah, you know, the, the, the Caliph of Umayyads, he allowed it. Mm -hmm. He did three very good things. He stopped the, the abuse of Imam Ali alayhi salam. He said, you cannot swear at him anymore. He was the son-in-law of the Holy Prophet, which Muawiyah had started, and he stopped. He said, it is forbidden mm. to to swear at Ali ibn Abi Talib. From the pulpits, everyone would abuse and curse mm. Imam Ali. So he said, you must stop the cursing of Imam Ali Islam. Secondly, he gave back Fadak, which had been taken mm. uh, from the Ahlul Bayt. So he gave it back to Imam Sadiq al -Islam, even though uh, the, the, you know, the caliphs and the Khulafa after him took it back. And the third thing, the very good thing he did was that he actually allowed uh, the Muslim scholars and, and, uh, and the ulama at that time to start narrating the traditions of the Holy Prophet again. Right, right. So he said the narration, you know, the Naql Rewayat should be allowed. Now, everyone started it and there were confusions and there were misunderstandings. So we, the Shias, take all the teachings of the Holy Prophet from Ahlul Bayt because Ahlul Bayt, Adra Bima Fil Bayt, the people of the house know what is better, what is in the house. You mm. know, they know better what is in the house. So we take our prayer from Imam Bakr al-Islam and Imam Sadiq and they say that the, 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 the Holy Prophet prayed like this with his hands open. Not only the Shias, but also Imam Malik ibn Ans, uh, who's written com compiled Muatta, and, and, and he's one of the major Imams, and he's one of the most popular Imams of the Sunnis. Imam Malik also says that Imam Abu Hanifa is from, uh, is from Kufa. He doesn't know how the Holy Prophet prayed. I'm from Medina, so I know better. And he tells his mm -hmm. ruling is to keep the hands open. Right. So keeping the hands open is a Sunnah of the Holy Prophet. It was changed uh, by the Khulafa, by the second caliph. To, to close the hands when he had conquered Iran and the Iranian captives came and they had their heads down and their hands closed. He said, why are you standing like this? He said, to show respect to you. Right. So he said, okay, now from now onwards we'll have our hands closed. Um, and, uh, and that's why um, our Sunni brothers also say they're not just ahl sunnat they're ahl sunnat wal jama'at. So ahl sunnat sunnah of the Holy Prophet, and jama'at, jama'at of the you know, sahaba, mm -hmm. jama'at, mm -hmm. meaning group, group yeah. of sahaba. Yeah. So the Sunni view is that the companions of the Holy Prophet uh, can, 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 can make changes to the Sharia. Mm. The Shia point of view from Imam Sadiq is Haramu Muhammadin Haramun ila yawm al-Qiyamah wa halaluhu halalun ila yawm al-Qiyamah The things that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yes. made haram are haram up to the Day of Judgment and the things that he made halal or permissible are halal up to the Day of Judgment. So, uh, you know, it is not permissible to ch make changes to the Sharia of the Holy Prophet. But our Sunni brothers do believe that it can be changed and the Sahaba changed many things and they say that it is acceptable. Mm -hmm. But according to the Shias, it is not acceptable and that's why we just pray like the Holy Prophet with the hands open. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. But somebody else is uh, calling in now. Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum. Hello. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam wa Rahmatullah. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Sister? Yes. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Do you have your TV on in the background? Yeah. It might, um, it might be helpful if you turn your TV down. Then you might be able to hear me better. Okay, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, assalamu alaikum, sister. Wa alaikum, assalamu alaikum. Sorry about that. That's okay. My question was, um, are we allowed to say salam to the two angels after salam? Ah. Okay, thank you very much. Are we allowed to say salam to two That's angels? That's a good question. Um, in the in the prayer, the, the final three salam, you know, after saying the shahadatin, mm. you say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa you know, the whole shahad. And then after that, you say, Salam. Assalamu alayka ayyuhan nabiyyu wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. The first salam is to the Holy Prophet. You say, O oh, Messenger of Allah, mm. you know, salutations be upon you and his mercy and, and, and blessings. And then after that, you say, Assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah salihin. So you say, salutations be upon us, all the people praying, all the Muslims, and all uh, upon all the the, the, the pious servants of Allah. And then you say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. 
for that final salam you have to intend you can do it to the Aima alayhi salam the imams to the prophets or to the angels so you can intend and give that salam to anyone you can say salam right. alayhi right. okay thank you yes yeah, so the angels are included in that and uh, i think that's important actually uh, to include the angels in our gr in our greeting um, now on our topic back to our topic of uh, women in, uh, in islam another issue uh, that is cropping up all over the muslim world is that the r in a way the roles uh, of men and women um, that have been there for many centuries um, are changing and it's becoming more common uh, for women to go out to work and due to economic circumstances it's not always just that the woman is kind of doing it just because she wants a career sometimes it's actually kind of necessary uh, for her to go out to work and but still we find that um, the husband is requiring her also to in include that with uh, her duties as a housewife so uh, she's still doing the majority of the cleaning and the cooking um, and I was wanting to ask um, do you think that uh, men need to perhaps share more of the burden in the home with the wives or should uh, the wives actually work less should they should they actually you know is it because it might be causing a problem should uh, they perhaps accept a smaller salary and for the wife to, to stay at home I think contentment with the smaller salary at home will be much better mm. the Holy Prophet when he married off his daughter Fatima mm. he, he distributed the work he said the the housework is is Fatima Salam and and the, the chores outside the house are uh, for Ali mm. Ibn mm. So you know, bringing water and you know, bring the and everything from outside. But you must remember, even though the Holy Prophet had many wives, even then he would share the work with them. You know, mm. it was many times found that the Holy Prophet was cleaning the house, he was washing his own clothes, he was you know milking the cow or the, the sheep, and then he was cooking. He was helping with making the the bread. Mm. You know, it's found very commonly. And Imam Ali Islam likewise, he helped not only Hazrat Fatima Salam Alayha. It's found that when he was ruling in Iraq, you know, in, in Kufa, that was his capital. Uh, once he heard some children crying from a house and, and he went in. He knocked on the door and he said, can I come in? And she said, yes, you can. Uh, why are your children crying? Why aren't you looking after them? She said, my husband has, 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 has been killed in a battle. I can't get, uh, go into the whole, mm -hmm. full details. But, you know, she was making some bread. And your mother says, okay, you go and look after the children and I'll make the bread for you. So she went and started looking, you know, the children are crying. So he quickly makes the bread. And she doesn't know who he is. So he's quickly cooking the, the bread for her and the food. And a lady from the neighborhood comes in and she said, do you know who that man is? She said, no, a man who's just helping me out. So she says, no, this is Ali ibn Abi Talib. She says, you, you mean the, you know, the ruler? So mm. she says, yes. So she says, I'm sorry, I, I beg you to, to forgive me. He says, no, I'm only helping because I feel responsible. You are my subject. So, you know, you, you find that, and, and, and I think today I, I must speak to myself first and, and then to others. Uh, I don't think it is, uh, you know, I, it's not found. In, in my father helped a lot more um, in the house chores, you know. I, I saw that he took a, a, a greater role in, mm. in, in our upbringing than I'm taking with my children. Uh, but I do see many of the scholars taking a lot more active role. Um, and I think many times their wives do spoil their husbands as well, mm -hmm. uh, and not telling them that you know, they need help. Um, but I think um, um, I, I, I say this with a lot of sincerity that um, following the Holy Prophet and the Imams mm -hmm. salam, they always helped. They all always helped uh, in the housework. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we should. My one of my teachers had once come to my house and. He said to me, well, are you going to leave everything like this? You know, we had finished food. Yeah. I said, yes. He said, no, you should wash them. I don't think you should leave them behind for your wife because you know, she did not eat uh, with us. So we, you, know, you shouldn't leave them behind. And I learned a lesson from him. You know? uh, you know, that's yeah. how he, he was working mm. in his house. So it's nothing new for uh, husbands and wives to, to share uh, some of the responsibilities at home, depending on the circumstances, of course. So we have uh, another caller coming in. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Wa Alaikum Asalaam wa Rahmatullah. Asalaamu Alaikum Rebecca. Uh, my name is Hussain and I'm calling from Manchester. Mm -hmm. 